Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're doing a more standard high boy build. On this episode, not doing a full blown restoration. Maybe something uh, you guys would be doing at home. So uh, let's go dig into it and I'll fill you guys in what I'm talking about. Well guys, uh, today on this episode we're going to be talking about my 1971 High Boy right here. Uh, if you remember a few uh, a few episodes back, a few months ago, I mentioned that uh, I had a buddies, a few buddies uh, uh, bought this truck from me. And uh, it is actually the, uh, the Complete Performance guys, the guys that uh, supply the parts for this channel. They uh, hit me up and they wanted a High Boy to do a uh, build on. And... Uh, I said I got this one here and we made a deal on it and uh, uh, you know how things are uh, getting logistics figured out getting something picked up and it's been a while and uh, they made plans to come up here and then, then those plans fell apart and then I was thinking uh, you know I kind of uh, I've been eyeing a few high boys that I want to buy to have around uh, the farm here just to use as an old work truck and uh, and uh, I really don't need another truck because I already have enough of my own personal trucks not necessarily the ones we're using for the shop here and rebuilding but uh, just my own personal trucks i don't need another truck so i was like eh, i've been uh, putting off buying one but then i thought well i have this one here already so uh i hit him up and i said hey uh do you mind if you uh, don't have to drive all the way up to oklahoma to pick this thing up and they said no go ahead so uh ended up keeping this truck but uh if you remember on when i went to go pick this truck up I, uh, I went to go pick it up just for the frame, and it was uh, actually for the Harbor Blue truck we're doing now in the shop. Uh, I bought this truck for that frame for that project, and then I ended up the next day finding that Harbor Blue 69. So that one fit that project way better, so I went to go pick this one up. So this one did not have a uh, home. It didn't have, you know, I didn't have a plan for it. That's why I kind of sold it. Uh, I think it's some kind of a DOT, kind of a... I think it might be a Kansas DOT truck of some sort or something, plow truck. As rusty as it is, it probably was a plow truck. But uh, the cab is pretty junk. Um, of course, I know all you guys in the rust belt and everything are going to tell me how nice this cab is. But uh, where I'm from, this cab is pretty much junk. You know, it's it's got rust in all the typical places, you know, uh, down here. I mean, every, everywhere has got rust that usually has rust in these old things. Of course, the floorboard is leaking. We've had some rain and uh looks like they put some uh some plastic down here to try to seal up the floorboard but uh anyway the old frame's good on it and i think the engine is actually good in here too but uh my plan with this truck is i have my uh, 69 over here my f350 it is an f350 although it has a uh, different model hood on it. it has an f250 hood from a later model truck you can tell that because it has the trim up here but this is a 69 f350 uh, and uh, this is like my work truck, uh, haul it off trash truck, that kind of thing. I use a lot in the summertime when we're putting up hay, uh, driving to the hay field and that kind of stuff. Uh, and uh, last fall, whenever we were putting up our last bit of hay, I uh, was uh, driving to the field. Actually, I think I was driving to the barn. And uh, it sounded like my front right wheel was going to come off. And uh, something came apart in here. I think it's either a wheel bearing uh brakes came apart something something was making all kinds of noise up here I, it is either wheel bearing went bad or something came apart in the brakes so uh, i haven't been driving it all winter and uh, it's actually storage for my camper right here my hallmark camper so uh pulled that in the shop and got it off the lift because i needed a lift and then it kind of sat there all winter but uh there's there's lots of things that this chassis needs the steering gear is bad in it the uh the steering column is bad in it it's all loose and uh wore out the brakes don't work all that great things like that see this the uh, the rag joint is bad as well as this, the uh, steering gear is really tight and hard to turn but uh the the cab itself is in really nice shape as far as rust goes you know so uh my thought was I'm going to get this truck over here going. Uh, I'm going to pull the cab off of it and uh, 
clean up the frame and uh, rebuild the brakes and the axles and that kind of thing you know get the running gear and everything sorted out i'll probably put one of my good 390 engines in it uh probably whatever transmission feels best i know the synchro is the second gear out of that one so we might take our chances on this transmission and uh we'll just do a high boy swap and since this is a one ton truck an f-350 it has the outboard cab mounts back here you see that so that's going to bolt right up to our high boy chassis so uh anyway guys i'm going to get this truck in the shop and started getting it stripped down and uh We'll do a little bit more of a uh, what you might be doing at home kind of a high boy build on this one since we're not doing a full blown restoration. I'm gonna try to knock this thing out pretty quick because we've already started putting up our hay and I've already missing this truck. So I need to get something going on it so I can start using it again. So anyway, guys, I'm gonna get something done and uh, I'll fill you guys in when I got something to show you. Well, I've been doing a little bit of tinkering on this truck. Uh, I thought I would uh, see how, if we get this thing to run enough so I could drive it before I pulled it in and uh, started tearing it down so I could see uh, what issues there might be on the running gear and stuff that I may not be able to see visually. So uh, once you get out and drive it, you might be able to tell the condition of a lot of things uh, as far as make sure all the four-wheel drive works, make sure the hubs are working and they hold torque and power and everything when you're trying to use four-wheel drive. And uh, the transmission, make sure the transmission shifts all right, make sure there's not any vibrations or uh, uh, things like that that you may miss. Uh, you know, so uh, it was. I thought I would see if I could get it running good enough and... Uh, I actually did uh, the the accelerator pump was leaking very bad so I put a new accelerator pump in it just so uh, mainly so it quit leaking because it was just pouring gas out uh, the uh, the fuel pump was bad in it so I put a, a spare fuel pump I had in it and uh, we're running uh, running off of a jug right here because uh, the uh, the fuel tank's got a bunch of old gas in it so just avoiding having to clean out that gas and everything so we're just running off of this jug right here for gas and the thing fires up and runs really nice actually uh no exhaust manifold leaks which is pretty rare for these old fe engines so uh show you how it's running see so yeah, it's running pretty good if you hear that tapping that's actually the fuel pump and that's why uh this is my spare fuel pump because uh, this was in the truck and uh, I was going to sell it and I heard that tapping noise and I, I traced it down to the fuel pump and uh, the, the arm on the fuel pump's loose so that's what that tapping noise is anyway but the fuel pump actually still works it just makes a little bit of noise so this thing actually runs and idles pretty good uh, and actually pretty uh, runs pretty decent although it is terribly greasy and uh, I'm not sure how old it is I think it's been rebuilt at some point because there's some paint on some stuff uh, you know so I think something's been done to the engine at least the, uh, the brake reservoir was empty and I topped that off and uh, after I started using the brakes, the brakes actually started working pretty good. So I thought since I got it running and driving, we just take you guys for a little bit of a cruise before I take it apart. Planning on pulling this bed off today. Okay. The steering is not bad. Um, I went ahead and ordered a new steering gear uh, just because I think it's been tightened up before and uh, it gets kind of tight at the end on the when you go all the way one way or the other uh, so when you tighten those gears up you're usually trying to take out the slack in the center and then uh, the, the ends get tight so uh, I did order a new steering gear just because I want the steering to be awful nice and uh, steering and brakes that's main my main concern the transmission it shifts really nice but the gear stick is really loose I'm hoping that when I take it apart it is just the uh, the gear stick itself you know the either the tabs that uh, hold the gear stick in place are worn or the piece that goes down and is worn. Uh, if, if that's the case, I'll be able to swap out the gear stick with another one and, and uh, use this transmission because it shifts really nice. But this really loose gear stick, I don't really like that. You can see when it's in gear, it's so it's so loose. But uh, anyway, we'll, uh, we'll see how that looks once I get it apart. So it, it doesn't drive bad at all, uh, especially for as bad as the truck looks. The throttle does kind of stick a little bit, but uh, steering it with one hand, so uh, the steering's actually a lot better than I was expecting it to be. And this 360 actually runs pretty good. It uh, rides kind of rough. The shocks, one of the, the shock over here, I think, is unhooked, not even hooked up. And uh, there's a lot of the uh, 
fenders and everything are really loose. The fender liners are really loose and rattling over there where the battery is and stuff. So it's pretty noisy in here. Uh, and the, obviously the windows are loose in it, the rattling. So it's not a very quiet ride. But at least it runs. And I did try out the full wheel drive uh, across the creek, pull the, pull the muddy hill up with full wheel drive, and all that worked. So, so that's all good. But uh, anyway, guys. I hope you're enjoying this uh, little test drive. We're extra test drive we got going on here. Give you an idea how this truck is driving. See if we can hit fourth gear for you. Grind them. So yeah, this truck drives down the road pretty decent, I think. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna rebuild the brakes on it, uh, at least the wheel cylinders, at least because they do work very good. So we're gonna see what the wheel cylinder look like. Probably replace those just because they'll start leaking when you start using the truck and uh, see about the transmission and the engine. I haven't made up my mind yet because this truck, this engine runs so good. We'll take a look at my 390 when we get to the shop and uh, see, uh, see if we can make up our mind on what engine to put in it. But uh, anyway, guys, see you back at the shop. Well, guys, I got the uh, 71 High Boy pulled in the shop here. I have the uh, bed yanked off of it. Just got the old torch out and uh, torched off all the brackets. Unfortunately, it was welded on and uh, it left a bunch of brackets and stuff on the frame, but a lot of them here I, I cut off right a little till the easily. Here's the front ones up there. But uh, since I got the bed and everything off here, getting ready to pull the cab. And I thought I would point out all the little things you have to do to pull a cab on these. It's really not that bad. Um, I already have the fuel tank out of here, so you have to remove the fuel tank. And that is to expose your rear cab mounts right there. Since this is a high boy, they're outboard. So the, this is the outboard cab mount, and here's the inboard ones. In some of my previous episodes, you might have uh, seen me talk about the uh, plates that go right here. Well, since this is a 70 and up truck, the 70 to 72s are different. They don't have these plates. They have bolts that hold the bottom of the fuel tanks down. So uh, they don't have that high boy specific plate right here. They have a bolt right here that uh, just goes through the frame, or the, the cab rather. And uh, the 69 cab we'll be putting on this will have the plates. It's a... Uh, an F-350, so it'll have the, the correct plates because they're outboard cab mounts as well. But since we we're talking about this, I wanted to point out, I just realized uh, the other day that LMC just came out with some new plates. So uh, LMC sells these new. They have the uh, four-wheel drive and the two-wheel drive versions. So uh, I have some on order. I'm going to check them out and see how they look compared to the originals. But I uh, just wanted to point that out for you guys in case anybody was uh, needing some, doing a high boy swap or anything of like that nature. Those are really going to help out with that because you'll have the correct pieces for that. But uh, anyway, moving on to the other stuff you have to do, um, obviously the uh, the transmission and shifter and stuff, that's going to stay with the chassis and the cab is going to come up. Usually what I do is uh, just take the transmission cover off and then uh, all that stuff can feed out through the cab. Uh, you don't have to worry about taking the, the gear sticks and everything out, uh, but you can uh, just pull the sticks and then, uh, then it comes off easy as well. But uh, usually I just pull the transmission cover. And then uh, obviously your other your other cab mounts, your uh, your front cab mounts here. You got to undo these, take this inspection cover off, and undo the bolt. And there's a uh, front core support uh, bushing down in here. You got to take apart. And then uh, your uh, radiator hoses, uh, not your radiator, your heater core hoses. You got to take those off. And uh, any wiring that goes uh, from the the cab to the engine because the engine is staying. So there's a plug right there that goes to the engine you got to undo that you have to undo your brake lines of the master cylinder undo your steering shaft undo your fuel lines going to the engine and uh i'm going to pull the radiator because if this truck has a fan shroud and that's going to get in the way of the uh, fan so i'm going to pull the uh at least the fan shroud i'll probably just pull the radiator just so it doesn't get in the way um the uh, the front bumper does need to come off because uh it overlaps the stone guard right here so uh, this one's all beat up but see how it overlaps there so it will get in the way when you pull the cab if you're just going straight up you can also pull it a little bit and roll it forward but uh, I'll, I'm, I'm gonna be taking this off anyway so might as well get it out of the way uh, there is uh, parking brake lines uh, the, the parking brake cable you have to undo that let's see uh, speedometer cable you have to undo the speedometer cable what else am I missing? Oh, this fuel line right here, you have to undo that. That one's uh, no good anymore, apparently. 
uh, I have to undo that and then uh, basically yeah that's pretty much it uh, there's really not a lot to uh, get these calves off of these trucks but uh, Anyway guys, I'm going to get after doing that and uh, get this cab yanked off of here and we'll inspect the rest of the frame. Well guys, I got the cab off the frame. Didn't fight me too hard. It's, uh, like I said, pretty pretty easy to get these things off. The only thing that did fight me was the uh, the bolts here on the uh, core support. Uh, they were just rusted and all uh, seized up. I ended up using a torch and cut the bottom of the bolt off and this one was still stuck in there and it was all the quartz port was all rotted away anyway so it just ripped it apart when i picked it up but uh, not too bad uh you can see kind of the condition of everything here it's, the frame itself is not too bad the front cross member's got a little bit of a jerk mark on it from when someone hooked on the front cross member and jerked on it but not too bad the front spring has this uh, uh extra spring on there i guess this side was maybe sagging a little bit but uh I have new springs over here, so we're going to put new front leaf springs on it. I have a new steering gear as well, remanufactured steering gear. See this one uh, looked like it was tightened up a little bit. See there's this adjuster screw here, and, and the screw is almost all gone. See the, the nut there? So that means someone probably tightened it up, so usually that means it's getting wore out. So we got a new steering gear because i uh, leaving manual steering on this truck, so I want the steering to be all nice and uh, fresh. One of this tie rod in here is loose, so I got two new tie rod ends. Uh, the drag link here is in good shape, although I do have a couple that are uh, a good shape. If that one show, is showing some wear after I get it all apart, but uh, overall, I think it's in pretty good shape. Other than the uh, pipe fittings on the brake lines, you have to change out the brake lines there because that's definitely not good. But uh, transmission, the, the sloppy shifter ended up being the uh, the shifter itself there the pins wore out so this transmission is probably good with the shifter change but uh, I'll still uh, look at my other transmissions and see which one I want to use but uh, anyway we'll we'll continue on with this frame I gotta strip all the brackets these things off and everything and I'll pressure wash the whole frame so we'll get after that well I got the uh, frame out and pressure washed everything I also knocked all the brackets off that I could these big old ones up here, he had some kind of a contraction on the front that he could take off on and off, and I think it broke off at some point, but those brackets were still there. Uh, cut the welds and then used a punch, a chisel, and uh, got it in there and got it to pry back and then just broke the rest of the welds. So those came off nice and easy. I still haven't got this bolt out of here. This thing's really fighting me. I'm going to have to end up uh, cutting this uh, top plate off and see if I can punch it all the way through, and then I can get the bushings out. I got new uh, new cab bushings. So those need to come off and get replaced. Everything uh, cleaned off. Uh, a lot of the uh, the grease and grime. I didn't get up here on the engine top of the engine because I uh, uh, didn't want to get water in the engine because I'm going to be storing this thing. So I didn't want to risk getting water in the engine and having it set with water. Uh, so I just did the bottom side in case I need to rob parts off of here, like the uh, the high boy oil pan. I think I'm going to just use this one and uh, put it on my engine. I have a few other ones, but... Uh, uh, then I'd, they're not in very good shape as far as paint goes, and this one has decent paint on it. Because I think this engine was rebuilt at some point, because uh, from the factory, the dipstick was not blue. And the uh, the bell housing has been painted blue as well. So uh, uh, I think this is probably a uh, rebuilt engine at some point. And see, the blue is just a little bit too bright. I don't know if you can tell that from the air cleaner. This would be the original Ford Blue. And this blue is just too bright. So uh, I don't think that's the right, the you know... It's just too, it's different shade of blue than the original Ford Blue. So that leads me, leads me to believe the engine has been uh, rebuilt at some point. The uh, transmission cleaned up nice. Here you can see the uh, part number here, 9N3Y. I actually got a uh, stamp to uh, recreate this on my uh, restorations. And uh, this is the same part number as the 69s had. I think my research has, has uh, unveiled that that part number is 69 to 71 and this is a 71 so that's uh, good to see my research is uh, is uh, coming out uh, correct but uh, the uh, steam cleaner did kind of take some of that paint off so it's not the best for preserving it but it does get all the grease off really good uh, this transmission I put a different shifter in it and it's it's really tight and shifts really nice so I don't know if I'm going to use this one in my truck or save this one for a uh, restoration because it shifts so nice um, I think it might have had work done. There's a lot of the, a lot of stuff on this truck that makes me believe someone was spending some money on it and not just running it in the ground. Uh, 
the uh, the steering gear is a aftermarket or remanufactured steering gear or something. Uh, it's painted black, so uh, the originals would have not been black. This is actually the uh, red oxide kind of color, the same as the transmissions. Uh, so this is black, and this up here is black. So this is uh, I think this is a rebuilt steering gear at some point, although it is it was very old because it was just coated in grease. So I mean it's not fresh now, but it was replaced at some point. The engine's been work done, and uh, the transmission here. This is a like uh, locating bolt. Uh, it gets the top plate in the exact right spot and has a lock washer on it. Well, that lock washer has been over tightened and it uh, mushroomed the washer out, stretched the washer out. And this wasn't, uh, I don't think they would have done this from the new process, wouldn't let that go out like that. So maybe this top plate's been off before and uh, something's, something's been done to the transmission. Of course, you can't really say for sure. Uh, it definitely hasn't been painted or anything. The uh, transfer case, someone's done, been in the transfer case before because it has high temp RTV on the bearing caps. Uh, but uh, someone's been in there before. Uh, it does have a little bit of play. Uh, the, these, these shafts right here are bad about uh, getting wore out. Uh, that one's not bad. The input's a little, just a little loose. I think I'm just going to run it because uh, uh, it'll work good for an old farm truck. You know, it doesn't need to be perfect. I'm not going to be running down the highway with it very often anyway. Uh, you can see some of the original paint on the transfer case here. The orange. These transfer cases seem to not last very long because uh, it's very, very thin. Very thin paint. But uh, got all the grease. This thing was just coated in grease back here. I think it had some kind of hydraulics on it or something. And it leaked grease. And uh, it just built up. And it uh, unfortunately pitted the frame underneath all that stuff. I think it held some moisture. Uh, so this frame is not exactly the best one for a restoration. So that's uh, that's good that I'm using this truck for my old uh, work truck. It had a PTO on it at some point because it has a different cover on it that someone took it off when they took the PTO off. And this cross member has been torched out. They, they did put the tag. The tag is normally on this PTO cover, but they did put the tag up there. So we, we, st we still have the tag. Uh, otherwise, the, uh, the cab mounts are... The perches on the frame are good. Sometimes these rot out, so these are good. I got the old cab bushings off of this. So uh, right there's the uh, one of the uh, vins. The other vin is, see if we can find it right there, F26Y. So right there's the vin, and the other one, the one you can really see is kind of right there. So uh, another interesting thing I found as I was poking around is it had, uh, uh, Ford service parts, uh, what are these called, shackles? Uh, they actually have a Ford uh, part number and sticker, C7TZ5776-A. So those are actually, they actually came from Ford. So that's pretty cool. We have uh, Ford parts on this thing. So that's another reason I thought maybe somebody was keeping up with this truck. And the, the diff cover's been off, it has RTV on it as well. So they probably changed the fluid out or something. The rear springs do not match, unfortunately, and I was looking at my rear springs, and I don't really have any decent ones to put on here. Uh, I have some that would work, but the bushings are bad in them and stuff, and they're all pitted, and if you really work them hard, they'd probably start breaking because they're so pitted. So, uh, not sure what I'm going to do yet on the rear springs. This one has for sure been replaced. Um, see how thick the spring pack is, and they're all touching here. And uh, if you go over here, this spring pack, see it has these uh, bottom overloads, they're flat. And then these are, it's a lot thinner spring, spring pack. I think this is the factory spring pack, and that's maybe one off of a one ton, maybe. I'm um, not quite sure, but I'm going to see if I can get a couple of matching springs to put on the back. The uh, rear springs are a little bit more expensive than the front springs, and I'm kind of already going over budget on this thing. So we have our new front springs here. Uh, the fronts are really bad about sagging out and being in uh, and getting real low and sagged out. So that's why I put, put new springs on the front. And these are kind of, uh, if you can tell, they're wore out. See that? How, I don't know if you can see that. See how wore out that leaf is from working back and forth? That's why they get wore out and they sag and they might even break when they get that bad because it makes it thin. But uh, next thing I'm going to do is I need to... Uh, Pull the steering column out of this uh, cab because I need I need the shaft for the high boy shaft. Uh, I can get the cab out of here and I'll get the frame on the lift and take the wheels and tires off and inspect the brakes and wheel bearings and all that stuff. 
I have some new wiper seals coming and stuff like that. Little pieces, change out the pinion seals that are leaking, put new shocks on it, and uh, figure out what engine I'm going to use. I guess since we're talking about engines, I'll go uh, go to the other shop and show you my 390 I'm thinking about using. This 360 does run really good, but uh, let's look at my 390s. Well, up here on the uh, pallet rack, I have my 390s here. I got two on this pallet, one back there and uh, one up here. The one up here is a... Uh, it's got a four barrel intake on it so this is the one i'm thinking about using it's uh to me or sold to me as a good engine so i uh, don't have any uh any uh, information on it other than it looks like somebody cared about it it's got a kind of a new elebrock carburetor on it it has a dura spark uh, ignition on it uh chrome air cleaner and uh, chrome valve cleaner breathers but uh, uh you know it's kind of clean it looks like uh uh, somebody kept manifold gaskets on it, so it didn't leak. It's uh, uh, still a little grimy, so I don't think it's like a fresh rebuilt truck or engine or anything like that. Uh, this was the engine he was planning on putting in. I got it with my uh, the high boy I'm calling Forestry Service High Boy. This is it right here. It's uh, the cabin bed or in, bot in uh, paint and body right now. But uh, this is the engine he was planning on putting in it. So I think this is the good one of the, of the uh, three I got. So... I might uh, pull this thing down and see what it looks like and uh, see if we need to do anything to it. I need to, I would need to swap the oil pan. It already has a, a 90 degree oil filter adapter and I'd swap the dipstick because uh, the oil pan would change. And uh, might do things like uh, valve cover gaskets and uh, maybe manifold gaskets while I have it out and uh, things like that. Try to get it sealed up a little bit better. But uh, anyway, that's my engine. We'll uh, obviously look it over a lot more when I get it off the pallet rack. Well, I got the frame up here on the lift and I started tearing into the axles. I uh, found some things that were wrong and found some things that were good. So uh, let me go show you what we got going on. We'll start off at the rear here since we're here. Um, I got the uh, the uh, drums off and uh, the wheel seals are, look old and crusty. They weren't leaking, but uh, they look old and crusty. So I went ahead and got some new uh, uh, seals coming since... Uh, when those go bad it kind of ruins your whole brakes um i have some leftover rotors not rotors pads brake shoes from uh, another project uh and uh, didn't end up using so i do have new shoes for the rear so i'm going to put new shoes on it and uh the adjuster cable on this side was broken if you can see here the uh this is what uh, adjusts the brakes and keep keep your brakes all nice and adjusted and this this brake was not working see how it's all rusty now the brakes were working on this truck uh you know when he stepped on the pedal it stopped the truck but um uh, apparently th this one was not working i do have new uh, wheel cylinders just because i'm replacing all the wheel cylinders because these are usually the fail point of the brake system so i'm going to replace all the wheel cylinders and i have uh, new adjusters for the rear on both sides the other side was okay but i'm replacing this one might as well do both of them and i have a new hardware kit for for the rear coming as well I was just going to reuse this hardware just uh, because on uh, on this truck I don't care how it looks or anything but we did have a broken spring on this side uh, I did notice whenever I was taking the uh, the drum off on this side I was uh, loosening the adjuster here and uh, it wasn't getting the the shoes were not getting looser like you would think they would and uh, turns out it's uh, had a broken spring so they probably weren't retracting like they should when I got when I finally got it off uh, that fell out but while I was working back in here, uh, the, the gear oil that did come out was nice and bright. And it's red, so it's probably like Mystic. Uh, usually Mystic is red. But uh, nice, clean, bright fluid. And since there's RTV on the rear cover, that means the, uh, the diff fluid was probably changed. So uh, someone was keeping up on the service on this old rig. So uh, that's good because uh, things aren't just completely wore out. Uh, when, Whenever they get old farm trucks like this, uh, sometimes the service doesn't get done and they just get ran into the ground. But it's nice to see uh, some work was done on this thing and kept it up uh, so it can keep running. So it probably would have ran for a long time, probably as long as I needed it to run. But uh, while I'm here, I just like to uh, make sure all the brakes are working good because I might drive this thing to town once in a while. Would like to have nice brakes. So that's the plan for the rear. We're doing pretty much a full rebuild on the brakes on the rear. Uh, just because I found those broken parts and uh, besides the drums, we're just using those old drums using the wheel bearings Wheel bearings are nice and tight, but we are replacing the seals 
and I, I still have to find I, I found one good leaf pack so I might use that leaf pack over here that I think's the factory leaf pack and change out that different one with the one that I know I found one good one so still working on the leaves on the rear on the fronts I got the uh, hubs lock the lockout hubs out and got this drum off that drum is uh, fighting me a little bit but I did get this drum off everything on the front brakes looks good which uh I, I knew that as good as this truck was stopping, I knew the front brakes had to be working. But I am replacing the wheel cylinders uh, just because they, you know, that's the most common failure point on the brakes. And plus, it was out of fluid when I got it. So uh, that brake fluid had to go somewhere. So these might have been uh, leaking a little bit and sealed up or something. But replacing those, uh, the, the shoes look okay. Uh, the hardware is okay. And the adjusters were all uh, in place. Well, this one was actually off, but it's not broken. So I'll just put that back on there. Uh, the wheel bearings are nice on this. Uh, when I took the lockout hubs out, if you can see on the outside here how greasy they were. So I had a I had a thought that maybe they were they just someone just put way too much grease in there. But when I got it apart, it was like all like this. This is actually cleaner than when I found it. I actually cleaned this up so I could find the the part the snap rings and everything to take this apart. But the lockout hubs were full of that stuff. And what I think it is, I think it's the uh, closed knuckle grease that's in here. There's a uh, the bronze bushing that supports the stub axle that's on the that's in the spindle. It supports the stub axle. It's kind of the seal for that uh, that uh, closed knuckle grease that's in here, and it is completely shot. You can see how loose that stub axle is in the spindle. So I think a lot of our uh, closed knuckle grease got pushed up in here into the lockout hub area in the wheel bearing area, and it was just packed full of that stuff. So gonna have to probably replace those and try to keep that uh, closed knuckle grease in the closed knuckle part the uh, the bearings in here for the closed knuckle uh, seem to be tight nice and tight and don't have any problems so I'm not gonna mess with those although we are missing a bolt down here on the bottom cap so I'm gonna be re replacing a bolt there and I did get new wiper seals for the uh, the small axle these are the small ones they're a lot more affordable than the HD axles I think these were only uh, uh, $30 a piece or something like that. So a lot more affordable than the big ones that are like 100 bucks a piece. So I'm going to replace those just because uh, these look a little old and uh, could use some updating. I'm also replacing the uh, the tie rod ends because uh, uh, this one is loose. That one over there is tight, but I'm just going to replace both of them. I got some uh, new old stock ones. I like, the, uh, like to find the new old stock ones when I can. Uh, for one, they're cheaper than the new ones. The new ones are like 80, 90 bucks a piece. And uh, usually the old ones are made in USA and probably higher quality. So got some new tie rod ends. The uh, drag link is in good shape. There's no play in the drag link. I do have another one that I know is in really nice shape. The boots are kind of iffy on this one, but uh, we might rock this one for a while since it's easy to change out if it gets some play in it. But uh, that is nice and tight. The uh, steering gear up here, I have a new one right here. So uh, new remaining for extra steering gears. We're going to change that out as well. So uh, I have a lot of uh, maintenance work to do on this rig, so I'm going to get after it. I ended up getting this brake drum off. What I ended up doing was just taking the spindle nut off and uh, pulling the hub and the uh, brake drum as one assembly. That thing is still stuck on there, but uh, we're just going to leave it that way. And uh, versus breaking the drum and having to buy new drums, and those things are quite expensive. So uh, anyway, I got it off of there, and I got the actual, got the spindle off of there, and the, the brake backing plate and everything off. Uh, so inspecting this side. This side was not as loose as the other side, the stub shaft. But I uh, wanted to take it apart and see what it looked like so I could get all the parts I need. But the uh, the bronze bushing in this one was not uh, as wore out as bad. It still wore out, but the uh, the shoulder was actually broke off and was working on the, uh, the stub axle pretty hard. So... Not sure what was going on there, but that piece is supposed to be uh, uh, one piece in there. And so that was broke off. So I'll be replacing both uh, bronze bushings there for the stub axle. And what I think what happened in here, this was dry. There wasn't uh, uh, the, the lubricant. It's not dry, but it, the, the uh, closed knuckle lubricant was not in there. It's just kind of some old grease in there, and that's all that's in there. What I think what happened was... I think someone put gear oil in the closed knuckle and when they filled it up it went all in the spindle and filled up the whole spindle and then that spindle uh, the grease that's in the bearings and the spindle the wheel bearings mixed with that gear oil and uh, see how runny this is you know that's the uh, the 
closed knuckle grease is supposed to be a lot thicker than that so what i think happens is someone put like just some 80 90 gear oil in here and it uh, mixed with the grease that's in the wheel bearings and uh caused everything we have here so i'm gonna have to repack all the wheel bearings with grease and then i'll have to uh put the uh the correct closed knuckle lubricant in there so it'll stay put and uh, we'll put the new wiper seals in there so it won't leak out hopefully but uh, otherwise, we'll just go back together with it. I got all new brakes coming, and uh, we'll replace those brown bushings. So I'm going to get after replacing all that. Well, guys, another day. I have more stuff done on our uh, chassis here we're working on. I got this uh, leaf spring, the driver's side leaf spring, replaced here. Here's the old one here. I think that's a one-ton leaf spring. It is actually longer eye-to-eye -eye than this high boy spring. When I went and put this high boy spring on here, uh, the axle was not centered. So uh, uh, it's probably because that one's stiffer and it doesn't flex out as much and have much as, as much arc in it. So these points are narrower. But uh, I think this was 49 eye to eye and that was like 51 eye to eye. So uh, anyway, we have a high boy spring back on here. I ended up using the, uh, the spring that was still on this truck on the other side. That's, uh, uh, I think it's a factory high, high boy spring on that side. This is actually a 73 uh, spring. The uh, the bottom overloads are kind of angled where those over there are more flat. Uh, not ideal, uh, but uh, these are the two best springs I could come up with without having to buy new ones. So that's what we're rocking. The overloads on this side, uh, unfortunately, are not correct. This is just an old leaf spring. This is not a correct overload. On this side, we do have a correct overload spring. See how it's thick down here at the bottom and it tapers out here to the to the end this is the the uh, correct overload spring so we at least have one i have a set of multi-leaf overloads right here this would be like what you'd see on a high uh, uh one ton uh and i had a set of these i was hoping maybe i could i could squeeze enough uh out of my u-bolts to get to get those on there but uh, they just weren't long enough so we ended up not being able to use them so i just threw these on here because that that's what was on this truck. So we'll see how it works. I am planning on uh, actually working this truck and using it to uh, tow and haul stuff. So if I do need uh, end up needing more overload springs, I may just order new U-bolts and use these uh, multi-leaf spring, the multi-leaf overloads over here. But for now, we'll see how this works out. I have uh, I have my new uh, brake lines on the rear uh, and. Uh, since the, the fluid and everything looked good in the rear end, we didn't pull the rear diff cover off and change the fluid, so I think that's all good. The uh, the front pinion was leaking, and uh, this is just a good reminder to always check your vents. I had the, they had the hose off of this thing, and the vent was plugged up. So I'm guessing that's probably why our pinion was leaking, because this thing couldn't vent. So it was when it would get hot, it was building up pressure, and the pinion seal was the path of least resistance, so it just went out the pinion seal. So uh, this thing actually might not leak since we had the vent opened up, but I'm, since I have it, I'm still going to replace that pinion seal up there. So, so we have that done. Uh, up here on the front, I have the uh, the new spindle bushings on the spindle here. I uh, got the old ones out and got the new one in. I still haven't done the other side, but at least I have one done. So uh, that's all done. I have the new tie rod ends on. So uh, here's the other end over here. Got them both replaced. I have the wiper seals replaced as well. So we have new wiper seals on both ends. So um, right now we're just waiting on our brake parts. I still haven't got my brake part parts in. So uh, once I get those in, I'll be able to rebuild the brakes and uh, assemble all of this. And I don't have my bushings here for the frame. So I'm, I'm holding off on pulling all this apart until I have the bushings in. So I can replace these bushings in the frame and then I'll replace them with the new leaf springs. I also did put a uh, new uh, steering gear on there, so we have our new reman steering gear on there. But uh, anyway, guys, I'm going to wait for some uh, new parts to get in, and we'll finish putting this uh, chassis together. Well, guys, I uh, have the drive shaft off here to change this pinion seal, and I think I might have found out why this thing had brand new gear oil in it. Uh, somebody might have been trying to make something last a little bit longer, because I got in here to spin the uh, yoke here, and... Something is very, very not happy inside that differential. So 
I thought I was going to get away with just changing out that pinion seal, but it looks like I'm going to be tearing into that thing after all. So I'm going to get it tore apart and uh, see what's wrong and see what I can do to fix it. Well, guys, I got the uh, diff cover off of here. And uh, first off, first thing I noticed was the uh, the wear on the ring gear is uh, pretty bad. Let's see if I can get a light in here to show you. Uh, if you can see that, those scars on the ring gear, that is not uh, how it should be. And on the uh, the back side there, there's actually, it's dug into it. So um, my theory is, uh, at some point, as dark as this is, see how black this is, that maybe this was ran dry at some point and uh, stuff got hot. See this bearing here has some uh, some heat discoloration. So I think maybe it was ran dry and got hot and then uh, they just put some gear oil in it and uh, sent it down the road. Uh, but the uh, the noise is actually from the uh, play in these bearings, these carrier bearings. If you can see, the not the uh, not it popping out, but the side to side. It's kind of hard to do with one hand, but there's side to side. Uh, there's there's movement in this carrier side to side, and that's uh, causing the pinion and ring gear to not be happy. So your your uh, mesh there on your gears is not uh, correct. So I'm gonna pull this out of here. Hopefully I can uh, just change everything out with new stuff, and we'll be. Uh, We'll get away with it. Uh, if it if these these uh, bearing cups spun in here, this one it might have done something in that. I can't really tell if that did anything like that and damaged the uh, housing here. This uh, this axle is going to be pretty much junk, uh, unfortunately. But uh, I'll get the bearings out of here and inspect it further and see what we can do. Well, I got the carrier out. It actually spell out relatively easily. Usually these things go in here pretty hard if you have your bearing uh, uh, clearances set right. And uh, somebody has definitely been in here messing around. We have a shim over here on the uh, axle tube side of the differential. See that? That's definitely not supposed to be there. And uh, looks like they glued it in there with some silicone. There wasn't any over here. Let's see the lights. You can see a little bit better. I don't think it's spun, so I think we're good. Um, I'm definitely going to have to clean all that stuff out, that uh, whatever they put in there to stick that shim in there. They didn't put one on this side, but uh, I don't think the uh, the bearing cup spun in there, so that's good. It was just entirely too loose. I think maybe they uh, there was shims. The shims that are supposed to be on that are behind the actual bearing on the carrier here, and there are shims behind that. I already looked, so there's shims behind this. So. Maybe somebody put, uh, they ran it dry, tore up the bearings, put new bearings in it, and uh, got the shims wrong or something. And then instead of pulling the bearing back off like you're supposed to and changing the shims, they just tried to shove a shim in there to get it right. And uh, they unfortunately didn't get it even close because uh, this thing ate itself up. So anyway, either way, it looks like we're looking at a new, uh, uh, new ring and pinion and uh, new bearings. And a very good thorough cleaning in there uh, so I guess it's a good time this this had an open rear end uh, might as well go ahead and put a track lock uh, walking diff in the in the back limited slip and we'll have uh, a better rear end to to uh, end out the uh, adventure here even though I wasn't planning on tearing into this axle because uh, uh, I'm not a big fan of uh, messing with these things because it's always a crapshoot whether or not you're gonna be a headache or it's gonna go together easy but uh, since this is an old ranch truck, I'll probably just throw one in there and see if it's close. And if it's close, I'll just run with it. I do have a, uh, if you remember the uh, the Harbor Blue High Boy build we're doing, we just did uh, the rear end and everything and the front axle on that truck. And uh, I changed out, the, the axle I ended up using for that, I changed out a carrier with the one that was originally in High Boy because that 14 gear ratio had a bunch of pinning and stuff on the, the pinion and ring gear. I'm probably going to use that one on this one just because this is an old farm truck and it'll probably run forever. And since I'm keeping it, I don't really care if it goes to pieces. I'll just do it again. But that's the only 410 setup I have right now currently. I do have another axle, but it's at it's in a truck at the body shop, so it's not here, so I can't rob it out of it right now. But uh, I'm going to go look at that rear end and see if uh, I need bearings and everything. And uh, we'll see if we can get that swapped out. Well, I got the uh, pinion out. And... Uh... I'm kind of uh, leaning towards uh, someone might even replace the ring and pinion because uh, this looks like a uh, fairly new uh, pinion in here, and at least in the shaft part. And uh, I think they just didn't know what they were doing because they have the uh, bearing load shims for the pinion bearing on the outside of the, uh, the outer bearing here. And uh, these go 
on the inside here on the shaft to set your bearing load and the the pinion bearing was very tight so these these bearing these shims were on the outside so that bearing was shoved in there just as tight as you could get it so that those bearings were really tight in there turning so because the shims were on the wrong side but anyway uh hopefully i can get something together have my other axle over there i'll see if i can get something coupled together that'll work well guys i think i'm coming up with a plan uh turns out we're not going to use this entire axle housing uh just because i went through all my options and uh it turns out we have a uh, 410 high boy axle right there we're just going to swap it out and use that one just so i don't have to mess with any uh have to buy new bearings and set up stuff or reuse old bearings that i'm questionable about but uh, i wanted to point out I did end up up in here in the in the pinion area. I dug up a bunch of chunks. There's like a pocket in there that that uh, stuff can stay, and uh, that probably means pinion bearings went to pieces or something in here went to pieces. And the uh, the guy that put this together just didn't know what he was doing. So uh, we you know we didn't have we were missing the shims that go right here that for the bearing uh, preload on the pinion. They, those were completely gone. So the bearings the pinion bearings were way too tight. So uh, this whole carrier's junk, uh, the the uh, bearing on this end just fell off that one. So it, it spun on there and got loose or something. Something's wrong there, but er everything here is pretty much junk. But I think the the housing is good, and these uh, these shock brackets are good. So on a high boy, that's uh, nice to see because those those usually get beat up on a uh, old work truck. So I think we'll save this axle housing for a. Uh, high boy restoration down the road one that we can uh, put all new stuff in for a uh, restoration but just for this old farm truck uh, i actually went, used up a uh, different carrier and uh, ring gear i have but uh, it was in worse shape than i remember and the uh, the bearing actually had uh, pitting and stuff on it and i i was missing the shims uh, for the pinion dip so i didn't have anything to start out with so rather rather than just start from scratch on a uh, on a ring gear uh, we have this 410 axle. This is actually uh, my dad's. My dad's letting me use it. Uh, but uh, 410 axle's got a locking rear diff, although the, the rear diff doesn't have any locking anymore. It is not the uh, bolt together type. It's just the uh, the regular limited slip. See here, spinning this tire, and that one's doing whatever it wants. So uh, they're not really connected anymore. The clutches are all wore out. But uh, just pulled the diff cover off and checked it. I think it all looks good. So. I'll get uh, I have to get the brakes and everything sorted out on this thing, and we'll put it on the put it on the chassis, and we'll finally have a rear end. This has been my, the entire day here. I'll, I I was just going in to change the pinion seal on this axle and found that problem with the uh, rear end, and uh, it consumed my entire day. But uh, finally, I have a plan, and we're going to execute it and get this axle in this chassis so we can have a rear end. Well, guys, got the uh, new axle all put in, uh, new brakes on both sides and uh put new seals new wheel seals new wheel cylinders all that stuff new brake line and i had to replace this one because i broke it on the old axle taking it off up there at the wheel cylinder so we have a new brake line and uh resealed everything in here new pinion seal of course new brakes on this side as well so uh that's uh, uh glad to have a, a rear end in this truck after all that fiasco the other day but uh have all that sorted out i also have the front brakes up here ready to go redid all the front brakes and uh did uh, uh reset the bearings and cleaned up our hubs our locking hubs these are actually the factory ford ones so reusing those uh right now i am uh, getting ready to fill the uh the uh, closed knuckle lubricant there and i talked about that earlier i think that somebody put uh, grease in this uh no, not grease gear oil somebody put gear oil in this and it, and it diluted all the wheel bearing grease and everything in there so uh, I wanted to show you the stuff that I use. Uh, this comes from Torque King. It comes in a tube. They call it closed knuckle lubricant. And uh, anyway, it says uh, the tube contains approximately 11 fluid ounces. Use about 6 ounces per side for the 8 bolt, which is what this one is. The uh, HD axle says use about 16 ounces per side. So uh, I'm just going to uh, split this in half and uh, instead of opening up another tube. So we're just going to do about 5.5 per side. But uh, there's a little bit of stuff left in there, so it'll kind of make up an ounce or half an ounce or something. So, so that'll all work out. Uh, uh, so, gonna put this in the, the tube there and and uh, get about half of it in there and go to the other side and do the other side. So, other than that, this um, this chassis I think is ready to go back on the ground. Uh, the uh, the engine uh, have some uh, have things figured out on the engine. Uh, I was gonna use that 390 that I have in storage 
but uh, I was doing some inspection on the bores and realized that the pistons are flat top pistons. So uh, that, that 390 is actually a uh, premium fuel 390s, has like 10 to 1 compression. It would probably be a really good, uh, this isn't it, but uh, probably a really good running engine. Uh, probably have lots of power, but uh, I don't really want to have to worry about pinging and having uh, uh, premium fuel because this truck's going to be doing some towing and some working. So when, when you're working a truck and, and lugging it and towing with it, uh, especially having uh, that uh, truck, you know, more weight than a car, they'll ping on you and uh, you'll get detonation and stuff and it'll be hard on the engine. Uh, with that high compression so you either be ended up turning the timing down or paying a lot for premium fuel i don't want to do either, either of that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to end up just reusing this uh the 360 that came out of it it was a good running engine so uh, i think we'll just reuse it i am going to uh, do a lot more cleaning on it i'll clean up all the uh, intake and all the grease and everything i got and try to clean it up as best i can i got new valve cover gaskets oil pan gaskets i'll have to put i already put the high boy oil pan off of it so i'll have to put the, the oil pan back on it but uh, we'll try to clean this thing up as best we can. I got a new clutch for it as well, so we'll take the bell housing off, put the new clutch in it, and uh, we'll go from there and see what we can come up with on this engine. So uh, I'm going to get after uh, finishing up that front end, get this thing back on, on the tires, and then we'll sort out the drivetrain. Well, guys, here it is. The chassis is all finished up. Back, got it back on tires and uh, rolling chassis. I still have yet to uh, get the engine put together and uh, get the engine and transmission and the clutch and everything put together and to pull the cab. And I got to fix a few things in the cab that's going on this thing. So we're going to see that on episode two of this project. So we're going to call it good here. If you want to see the uh, parts list and everything I use to fix this chassis up, I'll have that in the description below. So I'll have a complete parts list of all the parts I use because a lot of guys ask that. So. Uh, I've been starting to include that in my videos, so you'll see that down in the description below. If you have any questions, hit, hit me up in the comments, but check out for part two on this. We'll be putting the cab on this chassis and get this thing in a running pickup, so don't want to miss out. Hit the subscribe button so you know when that happens. Like this video if you like this one. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys.